Well, hello, everybody. It's Doug Rucker here with DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. Hey, we're located right here in the Houston, Texas area. We're in Porter, Texas, right by Humble Kingwood area off of 59 and Loop 494. So uh, if you're in the area, uh, stop in and say hello. If we can help you in any way, we'd be glad to do that. And also all you folks that are out of town that we ship to, we appreciate your business very much as well. Hey, uh, today I want to talk a little bit about diagnosing air leaks. We've had a couple of emails and text messages in the past few weeks about air leaks on either a Kingslinger air diaphragm system or our soft D 12 volt system or one that they've built themselves that we've helped guys out with trying to figure out air leaks. So I just thought I'd kind of do a little short video on some ways that you can kind of pinpoint where those air leaks are coming up, coming from. So I've got that coming up next. Okay, guys, so when you're trying to diagnose air leaks in a soft wash system, whether it's like our Kingslinger here or the Softy 12 volt or your own 12 volt or whatever you have, um, and you have these valve systems and you're getting a little bit of spitting that generally is going to mean, you know, you've got that spitting coming out of your gun. That generally means you've got an air leak somewhere. So I've had a few people ask me, you know, how do you diagnose or pinpoint where it could be coming from? And there's a multitude of places it can come from because we have so many connections with these valve systems and all of that. So it's not like when we used to batch mix years ago, we had one hose going into a tank and we mixed, you know, if we needed a 50-50 mix, and then that tank, we had 50 gallons of uh, say 50 gallons of bleach and 50 gallons of water in a 100 gallon tank and that was a 50 50 mix so the only air leak source would probably be right at the pump unless you were using bulkheads and drop tubes and all that kind of stuff so anyway i wanted to kind of go over a little bit with these valve systems how the best and easiest way to diagnose an air leak and so on this one on this kingslinger I'm going to sit down here on the floor. We've got three valves here. And, of course, any, whenever we sell them, we're always selling them where the third valve is not used because I encourage people just to um, add their soap to their bleach mix, their surfactant to their bleach mix, and then um, use this one as a spare um, that you could switch to from the back if you needed to or use it for, like, we use wrap for brightening gutters uh, we use the wrap for restoring oxidation, light grease and oil stains, all kind of stuff. Um, you could use it for a degreaser, for parking lots or dumpster areas, whatever. This third valve is always available that you can use it for something else as opposed to um, a surfactant. I don't like using them for a surfactant because surfactant tanks are usually always smaller and they generally will run out um, before of course your bleach or water so that means that you've got to stop and go over and fill that little tank up so to me it's just not worth it but a lot of guys like to meter their soap i've just never found the need to meter soap because as long as your spray technique is good you don't need surfactant to help to stick you need to learn to control your spray so you're not flooding a surface so anyway uh, when you have a valve system like this, the easiest way to determine where your air leak might be is turn all the valves off, get it running, get everything, you know, primed or whatever, and then turn one valve on at a time. So for instance, this is the water valve. So start spraying using your shooter tip, um, 
and just keep spraying and give it a, you know, a few minutes to see if you're getting that spitting. If you're not getting that spitting, then you know everything is okay from this valve all the way to the tank because you don't have an air leak. So then turn that one off and if you've got you know your bleach tank full of bleach then when you do this you need to make sure where you're spraying that bleach is not going to hurt anything um, or uh, you know you could hook it up to another tank or whatever but just, but really you, you've got to test this all the way back to uh, your tank so once this one's turned off you turn this one on and start spraying and it just go through the same process if this one starts spitting and it continues to spit and won't even out and spray solid then you know you've got an air leak somewhere in your bleach line now the other way you can do it so you're not spraying full fleet full strength bleach is after you've turned this one on and you've determined this valve isn't leaking you could have turned this one on and then you're only spraying a 50 50 mix instead of 100 percent bleach um, and then again if it continues to spit then you know that's where your issue is so what you have to do then is start diagnosing from this valve and what i normally do is i'll always start up here because 90 percent of the time the leak is going to be somewhere back here in your hose all the way to the tank hey don't forget this weekend we've got a big weekend planned june 8th and 9th it's a difference makers conference so you've got uh, time to sign up for that. We have some space left if you'd like to do that. Again, if you're signing up, your wife can attend with you free. So that's June 8th and 9th at the Courtyard Marriott here in Kingwood, Texas. Then June 10th, we have an open house for anybody that wants to come out in the Houston area. We'll have some coffee, some donuts. That's from 9 to like noon, um, Saturday morning, June 10th. And uh, it's just kind of to meet some folks. Uh, the, the attendees from the Difference Makers Conference will come over uh, if they want to, but anybody else in the public is welcome to stop in. Just kind of talk shop, meet and greet type thing. Nothing really big planned. Uh, network with some other contractors, that type of thing. If we can answer some questions, we'll do that as well. And then June 12th and 13th, that month, following Monday and Tuesday, is our monthly hands-on training. So if you want to get involved with that, if you're just starting a, a new business, that would be an excellent way uh, to get your business off the ground and get some great training uh, here in the field, going over the machines that we use, downstream injection, uh, soft washing, all of that kind of stuff. So that's June 12th and 13th, and I think July 10th and 11th, I think it is, that's the dates for the July uh, hands-on training maybe 11th or 12th I can't remember June I think it's July 10th and 11th so you can go to pressure washing school slash uh, events and check all of our schedule out and sign up for any of that that you want to so uh, yeah look forward to seeing hope hope you guys can make it to the uh, open house on Saturday that would be cool we got a lot going on I can't I can't keep it all track so once you've determined, once you've determined what uh, line that uh, leak, that air leak is in, you want to start, and you're going to start here. It could be in this fitting here. It could actually be in your coupler. Your uh, hose clamps could not be tight enough. It doesn't take but just a tiny bit of air to get sucked into the system to cause that uh, spitting issue, and so. You want to follow all the way to your through your hose. Make sure it's not kinked somewhere as you're doing this too. And then come all the way down. And so if you have bulkheads here in your tank and you've got a threaded connection up here and you've got threaded connections down in the tank, those could be leaking air. So I usually would, when I used to use the bulkheads, would kind of feel it and jiggle it a little bit if it felt loose. <clears throat> excuse me then um, you know I know I probably have the air leak there so generally what I always did was I would just take this bulkhead apart 
I would take the uh, fittings off of it and uh, re-dope them, put them back on, re-hose clamp the hose, all that, and then test it to see if it got rid of the air leak. But if you're using drop tubes like PVC pipe or whatever and bulkhead fittings, that generally is the first place where they're going to start leaking. The reason being is when you're traveling and driving, those bulkheads are vibrating, the pipe inside is moving back and forth, so they're going to wiggle loose. And that's why we use the bulkheads, the Uniseal bulkhead fittings, so that we have no connections here. And then down in the tank, we're just using PVC pipe and again a uh, 45 degree uh, elbow to put the hose into. I don't use, uh, I think I've said this before many times, I don't use the slotted filters or any type of filter in my tanks because we keep our tanks absolutely clean. Um, so, you know, if something small gets in there, it's going to go through. But if you get a leaf or stick or twig or, you know, plastic shaving, stuff like that, that can cause an issue. So that's really how you're going to diagnose is turning the valves on and off. And so if you've done that and everything checks out at your bulkheads, then you want to check here. Check all of your fittings here. There's several places here that can cause leaks. I know a lot of valve systems that are built use these check valves like we do and they're female pipe thread and they'll use spacers between to connect here. The ones that we use are male pipe thread so we can eliminate two more pieces here. So we've got the uh, street elbow here connected directly to the check valve connected directly to the valve. So it could have an air leak in here somewhere and then also these little things on the valves, these two things right here, those will actually loosen. So you need to check and make sure that these are good and solid and tight too. So you generally just need to basically make sure that you're checking anywhere there's a fitting, um, whether it's you know these elbows that are going up here We've seen a lot of issues with those sometimes, not issues, but those can cause leaks where this connection um, to the banjo fitting, which you have, I don't want to open that because I tested this yesterday and there's water stuff in it, so I don't want to get it all over, but there is a banjo fitting here that this connects to right here. So from that fitting there to this street elbow, those can come loose too as well. So... It's always a good idea every six months to a year, just go through your system, make sure everything's tightened up. Um, sometimes you have to take them off and re-dope them, put them back on. Um, it's just part of general maintenance with anything that we use because a lot of times, you know, the vibration on trailers and in trucks and all that kind of stuff, it just kind of wiggles, <laughs> wiggles stuff loose. So, um, but that's how you do it. Turn, just use one valve at a time to see if you can isolate which line is producing the air leak. It may be that both of them are. So you have to, you know, you have to track both of them down. So I hope that helps you guys. Again, we've had um, several questions. Uh, most of them have to do with the Kingslinger about the uh, air leaks or whatever. So it's just a matter of, you know, guys have used them for a while and, uh, they're starting to develop air leaks, and it's generally, like I said, because of the vibration issue and all of that. So I hope that helps you guys diagnose those. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at DougRuckerStore.com, and I'll be glad to help you. Y'all take care. Hey, if this video has been helpful, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit that notification, that little bell, That'll give you an email or, an, or a notification of some sort that uh, lets you know when I come out with something that could be useful for you. And then leave me a question or a comment if I can help you in any way. If you have any questions about our store products, then email us at info at DougRuckerStore.com. I try to be pretty, uh, stay on top of those and answer those as quick as I possibly can myself. 
And then if you have questions about our school or our training opportunities or anything like that, then email me at pressurecleaningschool at gmail.com. But hit that subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and hit that bell for notification.